Tom. Welcome to a brand new week. It's actually Tuesday morning. I'm waiting on the uh, the uh, the Smash Bros announcement, which should be in approximately 20 minutes. Got up early, showered, and all that jazz. Still have to announce it on Twitter, so uh, I'm gonna try and make this quick. Uh, Manatee had his vet appointment yesterday, and he had so he's got two infections actually. He has a yeast infection on his side and a bacterial infection on his front. So um, they think that it might be caused by allergies. So they gave him a shot for allergies and they gave him medication to kind of bring down the uh, the infections on his skin. Uh, and like this is the – I can't remember a time when we had Sharpays in the past where they had skin infections. So uh, I guess I wasn't as prepared for it as I thought I'd be. So he's got new medication. Um, I just got to make sure he eats because uh, the medication can cause uh, GI tract issues if he doesn't take it with food. Um, and he gets those once every every day. So today's the start of those new medications. But in other words, or in, uh, in other things that are going on today is Smash Bros announcements. I'm excited. Uh, biggest hope right now uh, is... Uh, a Monster Rancher rep because that's been getting a lot of uh, media coverage recently with the uh, remaster of Monster Ranchers 1 and 2 coming to uh, the Switch and Steam as well as uh, Suezo being an unlockable character in or a DLC character rather in Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz and uh, Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz officially comes out today so I wouldn't be surprised if there was some kind of like Promotion, cross promotion, something having to do with a uh, Monster Rancher. I would settle for like a Mochi Me costume because that'd be awesome. But uh, but we'll see. We'll see who's next, who the last fighter is in Smash Bros. And uh, the internet will get mad. That's my prediction. It's like a Nostratamus. And the last character we got in Super Smash Brothers is Sora. And honestly. I was more emotional over the fact that this was the last uh, Smash presentation for Smash Ultimate than I was excited for Sora. I think it's a great choice. I didn't think it was possible because of uh, because Square Enix is already a hurdle to jump over uh, in and of itself. Um, but Disney is a whole other story. And they co-own Sora. So there was that. Um, there's no, di there's no, like, Disney anything really appearing in that, aside from the keychain on Sora's, uh, Keyblade. Um, I guess technically his Kingdom Hearts 1 clothes were based after Mickey Mouse, but still, nothing, uh, aside from the point there. But anyway, it is Thursday. And yeah, still kind of, like, still kind of reeling from the fact that it was the last Smash Bros. presentation. Uh, I started, I probably mentioned this the last time I was on, I started, um, my YouTube career, with Smash Bros. Brawl by making machinimas. And since then, the Smash Bros. series has been a very, uh, a very important part of my life. Um, just career-wise and, like, and leisure-wise. Um, I love playing the games. I love, like, you know, doing all that, all that, all that jazz. And it's, uh, it's very bittersweet to see the end of the Smash Ultimate presentations. And, uh, it's, it's interesting because you have to assume... Because I don't, I don't one hundred percent know how licensing works, but I get the feeling that if they were going to make a new Smash Bros. game or just port Ultimate over to the uh, to whatever next consoles they make, they would have to jump through all those hoops all over again just to get them back in the game. And for all we know, some of them that were that were particularly more difficult to get into the game in the first place might might be uh, you might have to buy again. Um, mainly, mainly looking at Sora on that one. Uh, but yeah, over the past couple days, uh, yesterday I recorded more uh, Sonic Adventure DX. Finally named the Chow. Um, I honestly don't like. I'm a, I'm behind when it comes to editing these, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know when uh, uh, if you'll see this before you see the Chow's name because it comes up in like episode thirteen, I think. And we're on, like, what? Episode 7? And they post three times a week? Two weeks? Eh, baby. I'm not gonna spoil it, though. I know, buddy. I know. He really wants to go to the park. But I'm not sure if we can 
because I think I mentioned this uh, last... I don't remember if I mentioned this uh, yet, but when we went to the vet for him, he has a... He's got two separate skin infections that are possibly caused by being caused by allergies. Sharpays are susceptible to uh, to skin problems as it is, um, but I've been having them groomed every month, so like I know it's not from a lack of hygiene. Um, but he has a yeast infection on his sides and a bacterial infection on his stomach. Um, so I've been giving him his medication every day. He's been he's been acting. Like a little, little, I think I'm pretty, I spoiled him when he was young. Because he whines at me about pretty much everything. Uh, yesterday I also had to record more uh, Oblivion. Because Dan's going to be out of town and like busy for most of October. So he wants to get uh, ahead in editing. So, yeah. Ooh, he also needs to send me his invoice. So anyway, I need to hear back from the vet to see if he's okay to be able to go to the park or not. And then, you know, we'll see how it comes from there. So while I didn't get any footage of it, he is allowed to go to the park. And we did end up going to that park that day. He's trying to determine if he wants to eat the food uh, in his bowl. Because, uh, well, he's not the biggest fan of it. But he still has to eat. So I do a little bit, of, a few tricks here and there to try to get him to eat. But anyway, it is Friday. Uh, Metroid Dread came out today, as well as uh, the Switch OLED. I'm gonna do a little bit of an unboxing here just to show it off. You wanna go outside again, buddy? Uh, played a bunch of Metroid Dread. It's so good. It's like, it's it's everything. It, it, honestly, it's it's more, it feels like everything I'd want from uh, a new Metroid game and more. Um, so like, it's just, it's so good. I can't like, I can't sing the praises of it enough. The one thing I do kind of have an issue with is uh, the way the cutscenes are laid. Oh, I say cutscenes, but usually it's like the, whenever you get to a network room and talk to the AI that's accompanying Samus, uh, I have I take issue with that only because it's explaining stuff to Samus as though she has no idea what she's doing, which is good for the player, but not so much for the sake of story pacing. So take it as you will. I think the gameplay is really good. Uh, a lot of hidden stuff around. Um, so 100%ing it is, uh, is gonna take a while. And uh, I can't wait to play it again. Since I played it on stream, I'm going to play the rest of it on stream. So, might as well. Anyway, uh, I want to jump into unboxing the OLED. And I've got my Switch uh, just to show off as a comparison. So, uh, you know, we can get a good look at that. Here is, here's the meat and potatoes of it. So, I kind of want to compare to see... Yeah, that's... Let's see. Okay. It's kind of hard to see just on the camera itself, but that is a comparable size difference. Let me go ahead and turn. It does have a charge, okay. Let me see if it opens up with anything on the full screen there. So here we got my old Switch. This is the OLED. And yeah, wow, that, that's, that's, a, that's a night and day difference. It wants, it wants me to connect the Joy-Con, so might as well show those off next too. Here are the white Joy-Cons. Um, they don't seem that different. I've heard conflicting rumors uh, that the Joy-Cons are apparently like different for uh, for the Switch OLED, but uh, you know it just came out today, so that remains to be seen. There we go. So I was just gonna go through the basic setup here and I am gonna transfer all my stuff off of this switch onto the new one, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, in terms of what else we got in the box, uh, health and safety information, bog standard. Ah, here we go. The new and improved dock, which I think, it's not even really an improvement, it's just sort of a change. What they changed on it is that instead of having, uh, yeah, okay, so instead of having uh, an interior um, USB port, they added a, my dog's at the door, they added uh, the Ethernet port built into it instead, which is really nice because, like, 
I think like most people who were probably serious about online gaming on the Switch probably had that one USB port, like <laughs> probably were using that USB port for uh, for a uh, Ethernet port. But uh, yeah, looks looks nice. Hopefully this is the right way. It's in fact the wrong way. I think I accidentally picked Portuguese as my language. It just fits in there. Yep, I did pick Portuguese. Anyway, fits in there, all well and good. And then it comes with the usual uh, standard other stuff. AC adapter, HDMI cable. Oh, what is this? Oh, and uh, yeah, Joy-Con grip. And the, uh, there should be two in here, there they are. And the, uh, the, the attachments for playing with the Joy-Cons on their side. Um, yeah, but aside from all that, that's pretty much the Switch OLED in a nutshell. Um, nothing, nothing too new going on. Uh, it's just that when you're playing in portable mode, the, um, how OLED screens work is that there's, each individual pixel is backlit. So, um, when a dark color is showing, it'll reduce the light in that backlighting, or if it's just completely black, it'll just, like, completely turn off that backlighting. So, you know, you get much more vibrant, vibrant black colors on it. So that's, that's one of the benefits of it. Uh, I say this is probably good if either you don't have a switch yet. Um, you do have a switch and it's like in the process of breaking or, uh, yeah, that's the really only two ways I can go about it. Cause if, cause if you're not playing in handheld mode a lot, there's really no reason to get this. And if you're looking for a cheaper option, there's always the Switch Lite. This is a very, uh, I think there's going to be a very niche market for the OLEDs, but, uh, but I still, uh, I'm still, you know, I'm a big Nintendo fan, so, uh, I am, uh, legally obligated to buy everything that they, that they make. I think, actually, they changed... Okay. So, they did... That's right. They changed how the stand works on it as well. So, instead of having the one single strip on the back that acts as the stand. Now it has this entire thing for the stand. The only problem is the only USB-C port for the charging is on the bottom. Still nice though. Get just like a little little standy stand there. If ever you're out and about and you want to play with uh, with friends or just on your own some lonesome. But yeah, that's the that's the Switch OLED. I'm not sure if there's any other features I should be aware of on here, but it looks like everything else is more or less par for the course. Anyway, English. So I'm gonna get into the process of transferring all my stuff over from the old Switch to the new one. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the old Switch. Uh, if I'm able to keep both profiles, if I'm able to keep my profile on both Switches simultaneously, I might just keep one like downstairs to like play like casual games because I've been playing a lot of I well not so much recently but I have been playing um, Mario Super Picross uh, from time to time so that's um, you know we'll see it we'll, you know we'll we'll see if it if it works that way I I don't remember looking into that and, and if it worked like that at all but for the time being just gonna transfer my stuff over it is Sunday spent most of the day lazing around um, I did take Manatee to the park. He had a, I don't know if I was actually pointing at him or if I was just pointing at the bathrobe on uh, on the couch there, but uh, he had a good time. Usually is a good time. I'm a good start with how much he's been eating, which hasn't been a lot. Um, I don't think it's like a sickness thing. I think he just doesn't want to, I, I think he just doesn't like the flavor of the food that I've been giving him, uh, which he's going to have to deal with. Or I'm just going to have to start mixing in stuff until I can get him new food that he actually likes. <clears throat> Hopefully it's the latter. Every Sharpay I've had um, doesn't eat their food, never like ate their food that much. And I think there's two reasons for that. One, it's because he's all by his lonesome, so he doesn't have to worry about another dog swooping in and stealing his food. And two, uh, oh, what was the other reason? Oh, I, I didn't bother to make him excited about it. Like I just like put the food in his bowl and then like plop it down. If I made him excited about uh, wanting to eat like kibble, then he'd probably eat it, eat it more. I wonder if I can still instill that into him, even though he's already over nine months old. We'll have to see, because a lot of the stuff that he's imprinted with is from uh, earlier in life. 
He is uh, he's quite ready for bed. He's giving me the evil eye. Quickly, just quickly recap Saturday. Um, <clears throat> I streamed uh, Danganronpa 2, which was the... Uh, I streamed the end of Danganronpa 2, which was wild. That game was pretty nuts. Um, I, I guess I discovered the twist to it early on. Uh, I, I wouldn't say early on, but before it was revealed, rather. Um, but the way the game is kind of formulated, it kind of comes at you uh, in a way where it's kind of easy to determine what the twist is. Um, not not terribly early on, but at the very least before it's actually revealed to you. Uh, and, you know, it's it was, it, you know, the, the, the ending was good, left a lot of questions that I guess are answered in supplemental material, like a, like a sequel anime called Danganronpa 3, which is actually, yeah, Danganronpa 3 it has nothing to do with Danganronpa V3, apparently. Well, aside from, like, thematics and whatnot, and all that jazz. And then there's also uh, Danganronpa Ultimate Despair Girls. Uh, so, that might be worth looking into as well. <sighs> at, any, at any rate, though, it's been a pretty good week. Uh, been getting a lot done. I, I'm trying to think. On Wednesday, I recorded a ton of... Uh, of well, not a ton, but, like, I recorded a bunch of Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Adventure DX. Um, at the point that I'm at in recording right now, I just started Big the Cat story, which, uh, <laughs> everybody's favorite character, Big the Cat, buy his book. <laughs> it's not even my joke, that's a Runaway Guys joke. And, uh, I also got a couple more Sky, uh, Oblivion episodes recorded as well, because my editor Dan's gonna be out of town for a lot of this month of October, and he wanted to get as much done, uh, as soon as possible, so, uh, yeah, and, like, I wouldn't be able to output the amount of, uh, of content that I do without my, uh, my editors, so, big thanks to Dan and Austin, definitely want to bring Custom Smash back as well, that's one thing, that's one thing I've, I've been doing, like, in my, in my spare time, I want to bring Manatee to the park as well, I'll just bring my Switch along and I start, like, drawing up, uh, plans for, uh, for, uh, maps, one of which that I'm very interested to show off, um, if I can get the spirit combination right for it, it, it for all I know, it'll be out, it may be out by the time this vlog is out, but I, I highly doubt it. Um, but basically, the the idea is that the idea is to turn Smash Bros. back into a regular fighting game. Uh, so I guess I'm uh, so I'm looking for like a spirit combination that will uh, that will um, warrant that. Uh, I was considering, one thing I found out is that weight doesn't have any bearing on your jump height, so what I was considering was you lower the, uh, you lower the launch rate to like five, to 0.5, and then you have, uh, this is mostly smash jargon for the professionals in, there, in here, and then you have your main spirit have jumped down, and then the rest of the slots are dedicated to landing, uh, to, to less landing lag. Um, so it's a lot easier to, uh, to combo into, uh, combo into landing from a jump. Which, uh, you know, a lot of fighting games tend to, tend to do that. A lot of fighting games tend to, like, allow you to cancel out of different animations, and lowering landing lag was, like, the equivalent of being able to cancel out of those animations. And probably would only be played by the characters that can cancel out of things. So Ryu, Ken, Terry. I don't know much about Tekken, so I don't know if Kazuya can cancel out of stuff. But I'm, he might be able to. Not entirely sure. Anyway, it's been a pretty good week. And uh, I think I have to end it off here because the boy is tired. But uh, we started on Metroid Dread. Uh, we got a new Switch. I recorded a bunch. And just look at that puppy face. I'm very lucky to have that dog. I'll see you all next week. Later. Look forward to my dad being here for it.